Here's our first problem involving a system of particles. A lunar vehicle with a mass of 10,000 kilograms travels through space at a speed of 1,000 meters per second. When some of the fuel is spent, the lowest stage of the vehicle, having a mass of 1,500 kilograms, is ejected directly backwards. The rest of the vehicle continues forward at a speed of 1,400 meters per second. What is the speed of the ejected stage? Let's talk about our governing equations first. If we look at this as a system, we're going to assume that gravity is not significant on this object. So that means that there's actually no net force acting on the lunar vehicle. And if we look at the second situation, when it's ejected the second stage, even then, the two particles may have been exerting equal and opposite forces on each other. But if we look at it as a system, there's no net force. So what we can say is that the sum of the forces for the system which equals the time rate of change in momentum, which we'll use the symbol L for that. So the time rate of change in momentum is L dot, and that equals 0 for the system. So what that means, then, is that L dot equals 0, which means that L, or the linear momentum, and I'm going to go ahead and write out MV, has to be constant. And remember, that's what we call conservation of linear momentum. So if linear momentum is constant, then what that means is that from the initial state to the final state, the mv, or the sum of the mvs, must be the same. So what I'm going to write here, then, is I'm going to say that mv1, in fact, all our movement is in the x direction. So I'm going to make this into a scalar statement in the x direction. So I'm going to say mvx1 equals mvx2. Now, since we have two particles here, I'm going to note that it's going to be the sum of the mass velocities, or the sum of the momentums that we're interested in. All right. Now, before we can complete that, we need to come over here, and we need to draw our kinetic diagrams. Now, since we're looking at a governing equation where we're looking at mass velocity or momentum, then we need to put momentums on our kinetic diagrams. So on our first kinetic diagram, we're moving in the positive x direction. And we have a mass of 10,000 and a velocity of 1,000 meters per second. So our momentum is going to be the quantity 10,000 times 1,000. In our second kinetic diagram, after the second stage is split off, the initial stage is moving forward at 1,400 meters per second. And of course, it's going to weigh 8,500 kilograms. So we're going to have a mass of 8,500. And we're going to be multiplying that by 1,400. And then the other stage, the stage that was ejected, has a mass of 1,500. And it's moving backwards at some unknown speed. So let's just give that a variable and call it v2. Now we're ready to fill out the equations. So we have our governing equation, which says that the initial momentum has to equal the final momentum. So the initial momentum, we're going to get off our initial kinetic diagram. And you can see that we're going to have basically just 10,000 times 1,000 in the x direction. And that's in the positive x direction. And then on our second kinetic diagram, or our final kinetic diagram, we're going to have the quantity 8,500 times 1,400 in the positive x direction. And in the negative x direction, we're going to have 1,500 times our, times our un unknown velocity. And then looking at this statement, you see we have a fairly simple equation where the only unknown we have is v2, which we can solve directly for. And we find that the velocity of the ejection stage has to be 1,200 meters per second. We assumed on our diagram that it was going down. And since we got a positive value by solving this equation, that means that we were correct. So then our answer is the velocity is 1,267 meters per second down.